Lala, is there uh, moisture in the water in the air here in the room? Yeah. You know what it's called? Humidity. And it's invisible, right? Yeah. You can't see it. My challenge for you is to prove that there's moisture in the air. Somehow make it visible. Okay. You say, okay, what How? are you going to do? I don't know. Oh, here's a clue. Uh, here's a mirror. You probably breathed on a mirror, haven't you? Yeah. Go ahead, breathe on it. What, do you, what happens? Good. <sighs> now hold it up there and watch. It's disappearing. Gradually disappears. So why did you, why could you make the moisture that's normally invisible in your breath visible by breathing on a mirror? Because my breath is hot and the mirror is cold. Right. And then it creates a fog. Well, of. actually what happens when air is warm, it can hold more moisture. So yeah. the air in this room has moisture in it depending on what its temperature is yeah. and the amount of moisture available. So all we have to do to the air in this room is cool it off. Okay. Okay? Back in the refrigerator, I have a bunch of ice cubes in a sort of... Uh, uh, like a dish. Would you want to bring it up here? Okay. Okay, so now we want to put ice cubes in the water in this can. You, you get the idea? You know what we're going to do? Yeah. What? We're going to make the air right outside the can. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I thought maybe you might have made ice cream at one point or other. Oh yeah, I have. Uh, and what do you do with that? Well, you have a bucket and you have ice outside it with salt. Okay. And you turn oh, it. Over in the cupboard there is some salt, and while you're there, get a spoon. Okay. Yeah. You want to stir or add the salt, which? Uh, add. Okay, add some salt. I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you start. Okay. Okay, now let's, let's just let that sit there for a while. Okay. Undisturbed. No leaks in the can. Just let it sit like that. Okay. Because there are other ways that you could prove that there is moisture in the air in here. In fact, one of them is based on a chemical called cobalt chloride. Have you ever heard of cobalt chloride? Well, come over here. Here's a piece of paper that has been soaked in cobalt chloride and see what color it is? It's blue. Yeah. Now, which, here's an atomizer. You spray some water on it. Okay. See what happened? It turns sort of pink. Yes, changed color. So wow. cobalt chloride has a peculiar property that when it's dry, it's blue, but when it absorbs some moisture, it turns pink. Clever neat. So that's one way that you could sort of uh, check how much humidity is in the air. But have you ever noticed <clears throat> how your hair acts differently? On a rainy, on a more, you know, on a, on a moist day and on a dry day. Yeah. Well, that's because hair has a tendency to curl when there's moisture in the air, and that's the basis of a, a device that measures the humidity. See right there. I'll get it. I'll show you. What's that? Well, that is a hair humidity indicator. Okay. Here's a long hair down there. See, you can barely see it. Mm-hmm. And it goes around a spool. And then continues down here, and there's a weight tied on here. Okay. Okay. Now, at the present time, you see where the pointer is over here? Mm-hmm. If you now get the hair more moist, it's going to expand a little bit. What'll happen? I'm sorry, it's going the other way. It's going to curl. Now, what'll happen to it? This little pointer will move up. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's get it all set. Now, watch what happens to the end. Okay. And the reason for a long pointer is there's not much change, so you have to sort of magnify it with a long thing. Okay. Don't touch it now, watch what. Look at over here. It's going up. Down below too. Okay. Just barely moves. Now, this is based on the fact that we have only one thing that changes in terms of uh, the moisture, but real humidity indicators work on the same idea, but they usually use two things. In fact, here, you want to put that back on the table? Okay. And I'll get out real professional ones. This is more like what you've seen, right? Yeah. Top one is what? Temperature. Temperature. And the bottom one is humidity. What does it say here in the room? 40, 40 something? Yeah. Okay. On the other side of that little pointer, See, here's another one, just like it. On the other side of that little pointer, there's a little thing coiled up like that. You know one of those uh, things that you use at New Year's where you blow and it goes 
like mm -hmm. that and it unwinds. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same idea as this, although instead of blowing at it, all you're going to do is uh, squirt some water on it. Okay. Can I okay. squirt it now? Yeah, go ahead. Squirt a little water on it. Okay, watch. See it move? Yep. So those are the various ways you can prove that there's moisture in the air, but you did it with a very simple system. All you did was cool the air off, right? right. Over here? Let's see how you've done. Well, there's fog inside. No, is that fog? Well, it's uh... It's a lot of moisture. Where yeah. did the moisture come from? There are no holes in the can. It came from the air. Okay, the warm air could con contain moisture, yeah, so and when it came around here next to it, it got cooled and, and deposited. Condensed, right? You've seen this happen on the window, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, especially in the kitchen. Okay, write on it. You will, you'll see. What are you writing? W A T E R. Very good. So you proved there was invisible moisture in the air.